these times of a big society, I think Cambridge is doing pretty good. You know, basically, we can hold our head up high. There's so many people in Cambridge who put stuff back and help other people, particularly when it comes to entrepreneurship and startups. We have courses like Enterprise Tuesday, where you've got experienced entrepreneurs telling other people you know, how to go out and repeat their experience. We have mentoring schemes where people can learn face-to-face. And we've got networks, multiple networks around Cambridge where everyone can connect with the person who's going to really help them establish their business and grow it up to the next stage. But I think we could do more. And we could do more to help these little companies as they start up and fund them as they take their first steps into the world. But to do that, we need to all change our view of seed funding, which is not agriculture, but those little bits of cash that help companies get out of the lab and get started in the world and on their way to making a technology product. Now, we do a little survey every year of the outcomes of a scheme called the University Challenge Scheme. This was set up in 2000 to um, fund spinning out of university research into technology companies. It was funded by the UK government, Gatsby Foundation and the Wellcome Trust. So £60 million spread across 19 seed funds across the UK. In the last 10 years, these funds have made, if I can find the next little figure, 835 investments and set up over 350 new companies. That's over 2,000 new jobs just from this little pot of money. But most impressively, I think, they've raised 700 million pounds in follow-on funding. So for each pound invested from the original scheme, over 10 pounds have followed. Um, and that's a leverage of over you know, 10 times your original investment. But what's even more impressive is that we know from our little pot of companies that over the life scale, these companies can bring in actually over 75 times that amount of money in their life span. And a lot of that's overseas investment coming into the UK too. But of course, without that initial pound, none of the rest of it would follow. So that's a really large economic impact from actually quite a small starting point. But more important even than the economic impact is, of course, the societal impact. And these companies are applying university research across all areas of um, issues to society today. So on the physical sciences side, we've got solar companies. They're either creating organic solar panels to help spread solar power around the world at a lower cost, or microinverters that will allow plug-and-play technology in every household and improve the efficiency by 30%. We've got companies who have got new processes for producing metal powders, dramatically lowering the environmental impact, environmental impact of metal production. We have a recycling company that can change your Tetra Pak or your little kind of, um, you know, those coffee sachets that are made from laminated waste that can recycle those back into the aluminium and hydrocarbons, which can then be reused. At the moment, those Tetra Paks are just depulped and the actual aluminium and plastic goes to landfill. So there's a huge impact on society, even more so on the healthcare, of course. We've got a company that's got a biological diagnostic for schizophrenia um, that can identify people who have got schizophrenia and distinguish it from bipolar. So instead of a quiz, which is what doctors use at the moment to diagnose, you've got an actual real empirical test. There's novel um, materials for knee joints, for regenerative surgery, and then we've got companies, of course, working on finding novel drug targets using innovations today in epigenetics or phylumer technology, and applying that to oncology therapies and many other diseases. So the environmental impact is huge. But, of course, how do these companies get started? In this day and age, it's very hard if you're a seed investor to make a return that's at a suitable level for an institutional investor to invest in you. In fact, it's probably impossible. And you can see this from venture capitalists putting their funding in later and later. And it's not always possible for angel investors to step in because your technology company may well need 30, 50, 150 million to get to having a commercial product and eventually paying its own way. But without that initial seed funding, the technology won't be able to cross the chasm from research lab into commercial development. So this is where I think we need, all need to pick up the baton. The university challenge scheme was charitably funded. It had money from the um, Wellcome Trust and the Gatsby Foundation to start it off. And I think my appeal today is for all of you now to pick up the baton. 
There are a growing number of philanthropically funded seed funds around the world which have been set up to help continue this work. And of course, we're a bit biased that we have one ourselves. Um, these companies, they can make a huge impact, as you've seen, both economically and societally, not just in Cambridge, but across the world. So my appeal to you is to get involved and think about how we can all make an impact and help these technologies to get out there for societal benefit. Thank you. Thank you.